Okay, perfect na kayo. Okay, ang kiksi nun. Okay, and then, sige. So, can we now start? Sige po. Um, so, this morning, we will have um, our continuation po on uh, Freud's classic psychoanalysis. So, just, um, ano lang, yung summary po ng um, topics we had uh, during our last session. So, able to, to discuss the theory of neurosis which is essential um, in order for neurosis to develop. So, this conflict uh, it may arise between instinctual drives and external reality or between the internal agencies. For example, it versus superego, it versus the ego. And then this conflict is not resolved. And so the drives and wishes that have been expelled from the consciousness through repression or other defenses. So these drives are held in the unconscious system. And then they are kept away from the consciousness through censorship. So these drives, ito yung mga... Uh, these drives and wishes, ito yung mga un, parang unacceptable mental contents. So, so they are placed in the unconscious system. But these unconscious tendencies, they fight their way back into the consciousness. So ito yung nagkakos ng neurosis. We also discussed the yung type of neurosis studied by Freud, um, which led to important conclusion that neurosis built life are associated frequently with uh, neurotic reactions in uh, the past during childhood. We also started our discussion on the technique in psychoanalysis wherein free association is considered the cornerstone. And in free association, the patient say whatever comes to, to his mind, which um, provide content for analysis. And then it includes also, uh, and uh, it induces regression and dependency connected with establishing the transparent neurosis. So in which the patient's original wishes, drives, and defenses, they are transferred to the analyst or therapist. And there is a very clear form of the feelings and desires unconsciously retained from childhood. This will be redirected to a new object, which is the analyst. So however, the transference that develops toward the analyst may also serve as resistance uh, to the process of free association. So last time we discussed the, the variance of transferences. So um, we were able to discuss yung mga first few variants lang hanggang parang transference neurosis. But before we proceed, I would like to call Dr. Tating to uh, review lang. We will have a review of the funds of the ego. on the the transparency variants. So, ito, so we were able to discuss itong libidinal transference. So basically, there is transfer of parang positive feelings or emotions from the patient to to the analyst. So an example uh, na napag-usapan natin last time would be um, a patient attracted to the sexually attracted to the attractive therapist. So there's feelings of sexual attraction, intimacy, or romance. So pa parang positive siya na transference. And then we were able to talk about aggressive transference. So this is an, a negative type of transference. So merong negative or hostile feelings that are transferred into the analyst by the patient. So an example if, an example if the, the, for example, is if the patient is um, feeling pressured by the therapist to change her behavior. So as a patient, she will feel that she is she has to be obedient or she has to satisfy her therapist. So she will act in ways not to disappoint her therapist. But unconsciously, merong galit. She is angry towards the therapist for attempting to control to control her by changing her. So negative on feelings uh, towards the therapist, the analyst. And then we were also able to discuss the transference neurosis. So the, in this um, variant of neurosis, um, the, the transfer, there is a 
the transfer emotions become more important to the patient than the alleviation of the, the distress. So here, the relationship with the therapist or the analyst becomes more important to the patient who directs his strong infantile or childhood feelings towards the therapist. For an example here is um, the patient may react as if the analyst is his father, for example. So he may see the analyst as nurturing, um, a nurturing parent, for example. So parang yun na yung magiging reason na balik-balik siya. Magbalik-balik siya sa analyst niya. And then, ah, so to, to proceed, the next um, variant is um, transference psychosis. So this type naman of transference occurs when there's failure, uh, Failure of reality testing leads to loss of self-object differentiation and diffusion of self and of boundary. So this may reflect an attempt to refuse with an omnipotent object, investing the self with omnipotent powers as defense against underlying fears of vulnerability and powerlessness. So transference psychosis can also include negative transfer elements in which uh, fusion carries threat of engulfment and loss of self that may uh, precipitate a paranoid transference reaction. Um, next type is the narcissistic transference. So they are based, this type of transference, they are based on projections of um, narcissistic introjective configurations, both um, superior and um, inferior. So the superior form reflecting the narcissistic superiority, grandiosity, and enhanced self-esteem, and the inferior opposite qualities of inferiority, self-depletion, um, and diminished self-esteem. So um, through the process of introjection, for example, the, the, the patient, the, the narcissist patient unconsciously internalizes the qualities of an object or person, for example, yung, um, a significant person or yung parent, as if the the qualities were his own especially the good qualities so um they construct themselves as they parang they construct as a false self to cover the broken self and they become grandiose with high self-esteem and then after internalizing the good qualities um and establishing the false self they tend to project these characteristics to the analyst so for example is yung search ko na example is you you are parang yung feeling ng patient is you are like me so I like you so you you spend time with me and try to understand me and I like you for it so parang ganon and then um self object transference so in this type of transference the self object involves investment of investment of self in the object so that the object comes to serve a, a self-sustaining function that the self cannot perform for itself either in meaning fragile self-cohesion or in regulating self-esteem so um here the the patient in self-object transference the patient can introject um introject by transference um another person's self-regulation and emotional stability and then use this to self-soothe or comfort comfort the self at times when the therapist is not available. So there is parang unconscious internalization of the qualities of the object of person. Ang example ko doc is not <laughs> not with the the analyst. For example, is a mother, a mother may be an internalized self-object wherein the calmness of the mother may help um, soothe the child when they are together. And next is um, transitional relatedness. So this transference uh, model is based on yung um, Donald Wynn notion of the transitional object. So the transference is in more primitive character structures is regarded as a form of transitional object relation in which the therapist is perceived as outside the self, but is invested with qualities from the patient's own archaic self-image. So the, the transference field in this view is envisioned as a transitional space in which the transference illusion is allowed to play. 
to play itself out. So here, parang yung naging transitional object is the therapist. So, um, di ba, in transitional relatedness, parang the, the attachment, the attachment, parang it is the attachment a child forms with the various objects, the transfer, yung transitional object, symbolizing the good mother to comfort the self in her absence. So parang ganun, yung naging transitional object here is the therapist. And then transference as a psychic reality. So this transference reflects the need of each participant in analysis to draw the other into a stance corresponding to his or her own intrapsych configuration and needs as a reflection of the individual subject's psychic reality. So this regards the, the classic view of transference based on, based on displacement or, or projection from past objects to the analysis. So um, later we will discuss yung mga projection displacement that is used in the transference. So, ano? Uh... Yes, here. Yes, or are there questions regarding questions. this? Mahirap intindihin ito ba? Pag hindi yes, una po. During the process of therapy. Yes, po. So, anong yes, common yes, mga tra uh, uh, transference as relational? Uh oh. Sige, tapusin mo muna and then maybe think about a transference Sige. that you, ano, parang frequently you know, experienced towards patients and identify what kind of transference is it? Okay. So next is transference as relational or intersubjective. So um, the relational or intersubjective view of transference as um, emerging from co-created by the subjective um, interaction between analyst and analyst and transforms transference into an interactive phenomenon in which um, individual intrapsychic contributions from either participant are obscured. So transference in this sense is not anything individual to or intrapsychically derived from the patient, but is based on the present ongoing interaction between the analyst and the patient. Uh, co-constructing the, the transference. So, so sa mga types doc, ng, sa mga types ng, uh, or variants ng transference, parang yung pinaka-common is yung libidinal and aggressive. Sige daw, sayo. Bakit? Bakit? Like, when you say libidinal and aggressive. Balik daw tayo dun sa iyong previous ano, uh, definition of the libidinal and aggressive transference. For, for example, do, kasi parang may transfer lang siya ng positive na ano ba, na emotions like, oh, I like her, she's good. Parang ganun. Yung patient, kasi mas magiging cooperative siya sa'yo. As a therapist, parang ma-feel mo rin mas magiging cooperative yung patient sa'yo kung, kung merong positive um, transference. And then, yung aggressive naman, parang kabaliktaran lang siya nitong libidinal doc. Um, uh, there's transfer of mga negative emotions toward the analyst. Um, yung example niyan, di ba? A therapist and a patient na ano, nagkaroon ng relationship. No. Mm -mm. So example um, yun, libidinal. Mm -hmm. So so you be careful of the transference, no counter transference mm -hmm. issues, no. Pag nagugustuhan mo na na in love ka na sa pasyente o kaya na attract ka sa pasyente, there's a transference ongoing there. Si Baron Kaisler, doctor ay yung psychologist niya, doc. <laughs> Oh. Ay, okay. Si Baron, guys. Yung psychologist niya yung naasawa niya. Naasawa niya po yung si psychologist niya po. Diba? Na parang gusto niya nang makipag-break? Oh, yes, it's more so. sa ako. <laughs> Nabasa ko lang din ba? Ah, psychologist niya pala yun. 
Yes po, no. Oh, that's a no, no. Diba sa, sa profession natin, unethical yon. Yes, yes uh, po. Oh, oh. So, hindi niya na-consider. Hmm, okay. That's a very typical example of an erotic transference. Mm -hmm. oh, so, ano siya, no? Uh, parang fixated siya sa phallic edipal. No? Na stage uh, based on the Freudian theory. Mm -mm. So, kasi according to Freud, di ba, pag hindi mo na process yung kailangan mong i-achieve, like the Ericksonian theory, no, pwedeng pagkulang yun, and then uh, aatras ka eh as you go through the process. Kung kunwari hindi yun na-fill up during your childhood, and then here comes a uh, relationship na that could fulfill no, this parang aspect ng phallic edipal uh, shortcomings na hindi mo na-achieve. No? Pwedeng ma-arouse ma yung ano. Kaya atras ka. Aatras ka. And then lalabas yun sa'yo. So, ano nga yung ano, yung uh, so we need a lot of theory of mind no, as a psychiatrist. No? So the, the capacity to self-reflect, the capacity to check on yourself how you are reacting. No? So yun ang ano natin. Parang pag wala kang theory of mind, medyo mahirap maging psychiatrist. So we cannot just be concrete and see things as it is. Oo. Okay, sige. Ano pa? Comment para meron naman tayong... Ano pa yung... Sige, sa inyo na lang. Ah, meron ka pa ba? Ah, ito yung aggressive transference. Okay. Meron ba kayong patient na ganyan? Ganyan na kayo? <laughs> o kaya... Marami, <laughs> Dok. Marami, no? <laughs> Borderline po, <laughs> Dok. Okay. Borderline, o yung iniiwasan mo na parang, naku, ito na naman patient mo, ito paano kayang approach ko sa kanya. So kung hirap ang family, hirap ka rin. So ibig sabihin may lumalabas sa transference issue doon. Mm. Okay, tell me about it. Who wants to share? Bakit borderline ayaw? <laughs> Ay, Sino eh ba? Maraming experience. Ay, 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 I really have this counter-transference po doc, with borderline patients. And, mm -hmm. and I had this, ano, uh, it came up with one of our supervisions with Dr. Conanan. Mm -hmm. Sabi niya sa akin, doc, may fear na nga o oh, abandonment para tapos i-abandon mo pa. Para <laughs> Pero parang, yeah, tapos she wants me to look into my past po, Doc, if there were uh, instances by in the past that I was, mm -hmm. ano, uh, had to deal with, ano. Um, pero hindi ko pa na-resolve yun siya, Doc. <laughs> pero for, ano po, Doc, para makadeal po ako better with borderline patients, parang, hindi naisip ko na lang po muna, Doc, na parang asik na, parang, uh, why am I towards, uh, like that, towards them, but Ano po to, extending myself towards psychotic patients. Mm -hmm. And ang may extend po to self na po to sa psychotic patients, nga nung hindi ko mo extend myself to borderline patients. So, mm -hmm. actually, doc, sa ako niya may ginano na lang ako nga, sige, ikuan ko na lang nga, murag psychotic na lang po sila. Kay, pwede rin <laughs> psychosis, mayroon sila doc. <laughs> you know what? Uh, uh, ang suggestion ko, you have to see them uh, based on a disability perspective. Yes, uh -oh. Disabled kasi sila. I mean, on a dis so they cannot think like you, no? Mm -hmm. So when you're with a borderline patient, di ba, uh, it's just like you're walking on eggshells. Yes. Kasi careful ka, kasi pag ano yung sasabihin mo, you suggest gagamitin niya yun against you. So, yeah. Okay. Mahirap man talaga ang borderline webs. Yes, Actually, but, uh, even in clinical practice, siguro si kahit sino naman eh, no, talagang it will be really challenging to be with a borderline patient. Mm -mm. 
So you're not alone. I think everybody will have a challenge on that. Oo. Pag na-feel mo na na parang napapagod ka na, how much more ang family? So ibig sabihin, na-absorb mo na. At saka in borderline, what is the most common uh, defense mechanism? Splitting do. Okay. Okay. So when you say pl- splitting, what is splitting? Uh, they will see someone as all good and the other as all bad. Po, no? Okay. So what is uh, ano, What is the meaning of that? Uh, they have this. Uh, sometimes uh, they have this overly excessive ano po, dok, na love and then all of the sudden hate na naman nila kasi all bad. No? Para, no, they no. cannot see you as one. Ah, yes. But you can. You have your good part and you have your bad part. So like uh, like for a mom, di ba? May nanay tayo. Pag pinagalitan tayo ng nanay natin, pwede pa rin man natin masabi na love pa rin natin ng nanay natin. No? But for a borderline patient, pag pinagalitan siya, no, makikita niya all bad na parang lalaban siya as if there's no tomorrow. No? She cannot see the person as a whole no? in times of stress. So yun yung ano ng borderline patient. That's why they present with extremes of emotions. So that's why when they're angry, they they become you know, monsters, no? And then if they're ano naman, parang nagustuhan ka niya hala, para ka na naman yun. Pero ang galing-galing naman ni Doktora. Okay, and then may sinabi ka lang, parang nakalimutan niya yung previous therapy ninyo na nagkaroon kayo ng magandang transference, no? So, Ganun yun. So, it's really a challenge. Oo. Si Upper Heard po, Dok. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yung famous na news ngayon, Dok. Yung ex-wife ni Johnny Depp, Dok. Uh, very uh-huh. exciting po yung, ano, yung mga testimonies ng mga psychologists, Dok. Sino si? Uh, si Amber Heard po, Dok. Uh, uh-huh. I think asawa I... ni Johnny Depp. <laughs> ah, asawa ni Johnny Depp. Oo. Oh, oh. Ibigipo pa naman yung si Johnny Depp. <laughs> diba? So, sige. Okay. Baka nawala na tayo sa oras. It's 9.12. O, sige. Go. Proceed siguro. O, kasi kung sa sharing lang, marami tayong ma-share, diba? Sa mga transference issues natin. Marami dyan. O, tahimik lang. Pero, for sure, meron din na. Sige daw, May. Meron akong ano. Sige. May. Ay. I want to hear from you. Ano yung ano mo, mga transference mo, issues or struggles mo? Um, ang yung pinaka significant lang doc na naalala ko was um for patient somosot um bipolar patient po ito sa doc. And then he came to the ER. Um, he was big. He was shouting. He was parang threatening the nurses, mm-hmm. kicking the furniture. Mm-hmm. And then he would um, shout, uh, parang bastos na mga words ba, uh, towards me. And despite knowing that this patient is a, a psych patient and mentally parang challenged siya at that time, kasi to cardio siya that time, Doc, um, I felt this parang, parang, ano ba, parang anger. <laughs> parang I, 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 and, and I would feel small when he is around. I feel feel like mm-hmm. parang nakuhubaran nga na ako dok when oh, he is around. So oh, for oh. some time um during my rounds nagpasama ako sa ano sa mga nurses na male tapos mm-hmm. sila ang iba question marag mag sa side lang ko dok ba ana mm-hmm. until such time that he was parang medyo okay na so nakausap ko na siya. Na, na resolve man do kay Ginaisip ko talaga how to how to approach him and ginaisip ko rin ano mang reason bakit ganun yung naging reaction ko. Ganun mm-hmm. kagabi na to, to the point of na anxious ako mag-round kasi si CI mm-hmm. pala ako that time do. Uh-huh. Oo. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ato so do. that Ah, oh, okay. So that's where supervision would come in. Uh-huh. Yes, so doc na ko supervise pa ako kay Doc Paddy regarding that. Oo, oh, why you feel that way, ganyan. So, kasi you know what, guys? Ang supervision, man, good, hindi lang good sa case yan, sa case presentation ninyo. So, like, if that's why meron kayong uh, consultant na ano, parang pag may struggle or may ano kayo, challenge kayo, no? 
pwede nyong ma, ano, makausap. Oo. So, supervision is not only for case presentation, ha? Yes, mm -hmm. So, na-resolve naman yon So, yung aggressive mo na ano, parang transference na ma-encounter from a patient. So, it's uh, something so maybe you have to look back, ganun, bakit oh, ganun. Na-process ka naman ni Dr. Padilla. Yes, pa ano. Okay. Yeah. How about ano yung entitled patients? No, yung mga paano pag ano uh, mayor or panian pag president, no? So they have a sense of entitlement. Huy, meron ba yata yung ano yung handling the difficult patient? Na babasa nyo ba yon? Sino ang naga ano nun? Maganda yun. Pwede natin yun. After natapos natin yun, ang dami natin pwede ni ano. Sino ang in-charge doon? Sa, ay, ako pala yung psychiatric interview. Di ba? Hindi pa tayo nakastart. Tayo lahat yun, di ba? Oo. Meron tayong book, yung Handling the Difficult Patient. Yung, si Gabbard ba yung ating psychiatric ano, interview? Kasi tayo ba yun, first year, in charge ako sa inyo. Check nyo daw. Kasi after na matapos natin ito, yun na yun. Di natin masabay kasi meron tayong ano eh, sa, sa senior. Sige, nawala na tayo sa ano. But anyway, that's one, ha? Okay. Sige, let's proceed. Tapusin na lang natin yung lecture. <laughs> Miss Shankay 9 na. Mm -hmm. So now uh, we will go to um, the transference um, mechanisms. So there are, or there are three basic mechanisms by which transference are being formed. So yung tatlo na yun is displacement, projection, and projective identification. So displacement, uh, the, the, the big basic mechanism of classic transference paradigms in which an object representation derived from any level or combination of levels of the subject's developmental experience is displaced to the representation of the new object, namely the analyst, in the therapeutic relationship. So displacement is the basic mechanism for libidinally, libidinally uh, based transference, both positive and erotic, as well as for aggressive and especially the negative transferences. So, um, parang in displacement, there is, there is shifting, uh, there is shifting of an emotion or drive, uh, or impulse from the threatening object to, to a lesser, uh, to a lesser threatening object. So, parang ganun. So, those are displaced to the person of the analyst from the, the, the patient's, uh, mga previous, um, relationships, mga, especially those yung mga sa childhood niya. And then, next is projection. So, this uh, process by which qualities or characteristics of the self as object, usually involving introjections or self-representations, are attributed to an external object. And the subsequent interaction with the object or the analyst is determined by the projected um, characteristics. Example. So is, Ay, sorry. tapos ka na. Sige po. Go, go. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, the, the analyst or object may be seen as, for example, sadistic, that is, um, as possessing the sadistic character of the analyst or subject, an aspect of the, su of the subject self that is denied or uh, disowned by the subject, for example. Example daw, sige, typical. Kasi yung displacement, di ba, madali lang yun. Pero yung projection. So, paranoid. Sige daw, si, sino ba dito yung muna? Uy, si Adolf. Anong, ano, nickname mo? Marcos. Well done. <laughs> Hello po, Doc. Uh -uh. Mix po, Doc, ang name po, Doc. Mix ang nickname po, Doc. Okay, Mix. As in V I M M doc M I K Z po doc. I mix. Okay, mix daw, mix. Sige, example daw ng ano ng projection. 
projection po, Doc. Uh, yung layman's term, ang pagka-explain. <laughs> so, uh, um, projection. For projection po, Doc, uh, siguro example po, Doc, is um, Right. Ah, sige po, Doc. Uh, projection po, Doc, is example po nun, Doc. Okay. Kunyari ako, as uh, may, may history po ako ng kunyari, cheater po ako, Doc. So, parang gina, gina-accuse ko po yung partner ko as the as the young person na nag-cheat. Okay, para hindi po, ako, parang gina-transfer ko po sa kanya yung kanyang, yung aking mga ginagawa po, Doc, ba? To mm -hmm. make myself clean. Parang ganun po, Doc. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Very, ano yan? Very simple na, ano. Okay, so, klaro naman yan, no? I-project mo sa iba. Yes, po, sa iba po, Doc. Conflict. Okay. Yes, Doc. Sige. So, let's move on to projective identification. Very typical in bipolar. Ah, in, in, in borderline pala. So next is projective identification. So this this concept was proposed by um, Melanie Klein. So the projection uh, of impulses or feelings into another person or the analyst brought about by an identification with that person based on attribution of one's own qualities to that other. So this this attribution served as the basis for a sense of empathy and connection with the other. So the, it is a two-body phenomenon describing interaction between two subjects, one of whom projects something into the other and the other introjects or internalizes uh, what has been projected to, to him or her. So instead of, um, instead of projection and introjection uh, taking place in the same person, so the projection now takes place into one and the internalization in the other. Sige, typical example. Borderline patient. So, sige, let's hear from Meko. <laughs> oh, wait, sino pa ba ang hindi? Si Al, si Mix, okay. Sige, si Mekong daw. Um, teka lang doka, may isip mo na ako. Paano, paano, pag, pag ginagalit ka ng borderline, no? pag ginagalit ka niya, nasasayahan siya. Kasi, um, Doc, pwede ka. Ano? Ah, sige, sige, ikaw go. Kasi, Doc, there's this famous case about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, Doc, and si Amber Heard is borderline po, Doc, according mm -hmm. to the psychologist. And during their marriage po, Doc, uh, Amber Heard would project to Johnny Depp that he is uh, aggressive and violent. Mm -hmm. But the personality of Johnny Depp actually, Doc, she, he would really walk out from fights. He would avoid, he would retreat. But Amber Heard, since borderline man siya, Doc, she would really provoke Johnny Depp. Yeah, if, mm -hmm. if, if, if she would really say you know, that he was bad, he was, uh, he would also, she would also feed on her in his insecurities. And until such point that Johnny Depp would retaliate and even initiate the fight for Doc herself until such time that Johnny Depp would uh, turn violent towards her, marag -marag retaliate na siya. And that would, ano, na she would attain her goal na i-project si Johnny Depp as the violent person and she mm -hmm. as the victim po, Doc. So marag, uh, marag na-internalize na ni Johnny Depp ang ginaingon ni Amber Heard that he is uh, violent and aggressive and uh, mm -hmm. na mm -hmm. na siya sa relationship na. Mm -hmm. yeah so with a when you are chaotic inside no so how will you externalize it no so because you are in chaotic inside and then uh, when you see somebody that you care becomes chaotic that would be a representation of your inner self. 
So it gives you a satisfaction. So you project and he I projective identification. So see si Johnny Depp, no, yung reaction niya towards uh Amber Heard, tama ba? Yes, ma'am. Uh -oh, is actually giving her the ano ganito? Yung affirmation of the chaos inside of her that gives her a sense of relief because it the, the partner understands how she feels and the partner is presenting no, how she feels, no, externalizing how she feels. So remember, it should be the, the, ano, the one projecting no, who should feel that sense of fulfillment when somebody reacts the way she feels or externalizes or represents the way she feels. Uh -oh. So, she na internalize ng partner niya at the same time feeds her. Parang ganun yung projective identification. So, pag ginagalit ka ni Borderline, no, unconsciously sa kanya, happy siya. Kasi nakikita niya yung galit niya sa loob niya sa'yo. So, it fulfills the identification. So, it's an expression of something unconsciously na for her fulfills her unconsciously so it so that's why the relationship is chaotic so unconsciously she is creating this because unconsciously she would like you to represent her emotions so yun yung projective identification na claro ba Yes. Mm -mm. Okay, may kong, sige, example. May meron ka bang borderline patient na na-encounter? Mm. Meron po, Dok, pero matagal na kasi, Dok. Teka lang, Dok. Ha? Dok, maalala. Um, ano doc, um, wala pa masyado akong experience na yung sa mga borderline patients. Mm -mm. Okay. Wala, pong, wala pa akong na ano doc, na nag, ano talaga, nag-check sa akin na mm -mm. na ganito na experience doc. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, maganda maghanap kayo ng borderline pag ano, during residency training. Kasi para maghanap no maghanap kayo ng borderline kasi pag in, in practice na kayo no mas alam niyo na magano kasi mahirap na pag pag magano kayo ng borderline pag in practice na kayo wala kayong asa ah, bagay meron man kayong call a friend or what jan oo or ayun so that's why even in ano in dealing with uh, borderline patients you need also supervision no? a colleague no to, to help you to ano, help you deal with it also. Okay, sige. Uh -uh. Meron pa ba? Last slide po. Um, so counter transference. So um, it was it was not only an obstacle, but it is also a source of useful information about the patient. So. In counter-transference, the analyst's feelings in response to the patient reflect how other persons respond to the patient and provide some indication of the patient's own internal object relation. So by understanding the intense feelings that occur in the analytic relationship, the analyst can help the patient broaden um, his understanding of the past and current relationships outside the analyst. So that, that is my last slide. Okay. Thank you, Sheng. I hope this another uh, didactics uh, no, help kahit pa pa, no, for you to understand yourself and the patient. Uh -oh. So what will be our next topic? Ba? Uh, good morning, Doc. This is the, the different ego function. So I got my source from 
an article from Belak. Sorry, before I forget, no, you, the sources you have to send me because uh, for the exam, that will be no, my source also. Uh -oh. That will be the basis. Okay, for my exam questions. Okay, to proceed. So first, ego function is reality testing. It is the ability to distinguish between external and external stimuli. Uh, the accuracy of perception includes orientation to time and place and interpretation of external events. So it is a re reflective awareness and inner re reality testing, which permits a person to distinguish between actual objects, situations, and his fantasies. Next would be judgment. It is the ability to anticipate consequences of behavior and awareness of consequences. Next is the sense of reality. It is the assessment of the level of self-esteem and the separateness. So it is how you separate you are from the world and others. Next would be regulation of control, affects, and impulses. So how directly the client expresses their impulses and their ability to delete impulses or, I mean, this is delay, delay impulses or expressions of affect. So it involves impulse control, emotional regulation, the directness of impulse expression ranging from primitive acting out through neurotic acting out to a relative indirect forms of behavioral expression. Next would be object relations. It is the assessment of degree of relatedness the client has with others in their life, past and present. So basically looking at the relationship patterns. Next would be your thought process. It is the the attention, concentration, and anticipation, and organization of thoughts, concept, formation, thinking, memory, language, and it is the cognitive side of the thought. Next would be adaptive regression. It is how well the person can relax on perceptions and increase their ability to access unconscious material. Next would be defensive functioning. It is the degree to which defenses are adaptive or maladaptive and how they influence thought, habit, and behavior. Next would be stimulus barrier. It is the person's threshold for sensitivity to aware to end awareness of stimuli, impinging on sensory modalities and how they cope with that. So it is the effectiveness of management in excessive stimulus input. Next would be the autonomous functioning. It is the person's ability to function independently based on the physiological state. And next would be the synthetic integration of functioning. It is the capacity to reconcile or integrate discrepancies in the attitude, affect, behavior, values, and self-representations. So it is how the person handles unexpected changes. So it involves flexibility and also the cognitive dissonance and the rationalizations of such situations. And lastly, your the mastery of involves self-efficacy. It is a conscious statement of feeling adequate or successful and ability to perform. So for, um, I was also told to kind of discuss uh, the near Freudians or the former, former followers of Freud. So here are the uh, famous followers of Freud. So first we have Carl Jung. So Carl Jung was a young psychiatrist. So when he read, uh, he read Freud's interpretation of Jung soon after it was released around 1900s. So Jung sent for the copy of his book called The Psychology of Dementia Precox. So they arranged a meeting in Vienna and they were able to build a strong relationship. And also at that time, Freud decided that Jung should be his successor. So he, at part of that, no, Jung was opposed to the central role of sex and aggression in human life. He proposed that people are motivated by more general physiological energy, so the deepest uh, psychological energy, the deepest part of one psyche, comprises the collective unconscious. So the collective unconscious, it is the set of influences inherited from our family and the human race and across culture. It contains the archetypes, which are mental images of a particular person, objects, or experiences. So this may involve uh, the hero, the powerful father, 
the innocent child, the nurture mother are examples of your archetypes. So their close relationship was complex and overdetermined as they were involved personally, you know, and but had incompatibilities. So one important reason, according to the letters of Jung, uh, the immediate reason was that Freud identified his method with the sex theory, which I deemed inadmissible. Also, we have Karen uh, Horny, Horny. Uh, basic anxiety. She, uh, she is the proponent of basic anxiety. So she received her training at Berlin Psychoanalytic Institute from 1918 to 1932. She came to the U.S. and became the associate director of Chicago Psychoanalytic Institute for two years. So Karen Horny emphasizes on the importance of social relationships and the personality development, as well as your basic anxiety, which refers to the feeling of a child of being isolated and helpless in a potentially hostile world. So also she was dissatisfied with the oral psychosis. She published uh, papers criticizing Freud and proposed her own feminine psychology. She emphasized on the importance of social relationships and the personality development as mentioned. And she shifted from uh, Freud, Freud's instinctual, instinctual focus into a more cultural focus. Also people internalized negative cultural stereotypes in the form of basic anxiety. So she objectively disagree on the concept of meanness envy as the determining factor for the psychology of women. And as such, uh, she mentioned that feminine anxiety, although she was uh, some of uh, the ideas of Freud uh, were, were against to her, uh, she still endorses uh, Freud's doctrine on psychology, the unconscious and conscious motives. Also, we have Alfred Adler. Josh, uh, he is the proponent of the feelings of inferiority and super superiority. So Adler proposed that the central human motive is that of striving for superiority. So it may arise from the feelings of inferiority that are experienced during infancy and childhood. Also, during the period, the child is selfless and depends on others for help and support. So the psychoanalytic ideas have been criticized on the ground that there is an inadequate evidence to support theory. And lastly, um, also, um, is considered also a initially met Anna, Anna Freud, the daughter of Sigmund Freud, and was encouraged him to study psychoanalysis. He graduated Vienna Psychoanalytic Institute in 1993, and during the same year, he moved to the United States because of the spread in the, the Europe. So he later proposed the psychosocial theory of development, which focuses on the personality developing throughout one's life. So it is a departure from Freud's view that the personality is fixed in the earlier life. So he identified each stages of which represents a conflict and developmental tasks. So that ends of my assignment.